I have around 25 properties in my Notion task management system, but how many of them are must-haves? This is what I'm going to be disclosing in this video, my top 6 properties that I think everyone should use in their task management system in Notion. Let's get into it. Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Daniel, former engineer and founder of the Notion Academy. And on this channel, we use Notion and other tools and strategies to free up our time and gain control of our lives. So I'm going to show these six properties in inverse order from least important to more important. So in the sixth position, we have the projects property. So you may wonder why a property like this I have put in the least important place of the list. Well, this is because for me, the project property, it's a simple select property and its sole purpose is to give me visual feedback of what is the context of the task. So this means if I have a task such as a setup notion dashboard and this task is from one of my clients, I will have this as a project and I don't need any more context. Just with seeing the name of the client, I know what this task is about. Also, another way that I am using this is in sometimes to filter all the tasks by project. For example, in the page of my Notion Academy, here I have all the tasks filtered by the Notion business. In the fifth position, we have the status property. Some people like to use checkboxes to set a task as done or not done, but for me, that is not enough. I need an extra status, which is going to be the in progress status. Because when I'm working, I'm looking at this common view. So I like that the task that I'm going to start, I can move it to the in progress column. And this is going to tell my brain that this is the task that we are now focusing on, Danny. And believe it or not, this helps me to get focused on it. But this is a pretty straightforward property, so that's why it's in the fifth place. Now, in the fourth place, we have the due date. If there is any property that allows me to get somewhat organized, this is the due date. This property is different from the due date and why I prefer to use due dates because I am working for myself and I don't have any hard deadlines. So therefore, what I like to do is to set a due date. So it's the day in which I'm going to do this task. And this property allows me to go to my focus page and filter by everything that is due today. Here I'm using a formula because I am combining the, the days that I need to do my recurring task and my normal tasks. But if the task is not recurring, here is going to be directly the due date. If you are interested in knowing how I set up recurring tasks in Notion, over here, you will find the link to that video in which I go deep into it and you will also be able to find a template for that. But this property alone is not enough for me to schedule my weeks because as you may know by now, I schedule all my weeks on Saturdays or Sundays. I need an extra property for that. And this is the property that I have placed in the third position, which is the estimated time. This is a very basic property, but very powerful at the same time. When I input tasks into my system, I force myself to always try to calculate in advance how long is this task going to take me. I prefer to do this in the moment that I'm creating the task because the other solution will be to do it when I'm scheduling them for my week. But I really believe that we can have what I call scheduling fatigue, which is the syndrome that is scientifically proven to affect how realistic we are when we are scheduling our tasks. This means the more tasks that we schedule in bulk, the more we think that we are able to tackle them all. But if we set the estimated time right from the get-go, when we schedule them, we will have a much better starting point. Let me explain. Here we can see that the estimated time I have separated in these time frames, which accommodates all my tasks. So now if I go to my plan page, which is an excerpt of my weekly review, I will be able to see here the length of each of the tasks. So whenever I'm scheduling tasks, dragging them from left to right, I will be able to see if what I'm scheduling for the day is too much or too little. If you want to dig a little bit deeper on the tips that I have for scheduling tasks correctly, 
and realistically. You can check the video over here that I made like some weeks ago in which I go a little bit deeper into this topic. So all in all, this property allows me to realistically schedule my weeks and be able to do everything that I set myself to do in each of my days. Now on to the second one, which is the dollar tasks. I have borrowed this idea from K. High, and I'm sure that he explains it much better than me, but let me try. Here we separate the tasks into $10, $100, $1,000, and $10,000 per hour tasks. And then we separate them into this quadrant in which the axes read the skill that we need for the task and the leverage that the task is going to have. A $10 task is going to be a low leverage and low skill kind of task. And an example of this can be replying to email. You will not get a very big return out of this task and you also don't need much skill to do it. The next one in the quadrant is going to be the $100 per hour task. This is high leverage, but low skill. An example will be to set up some automations for your business or to set up your text expander so you can save some seconds every time that you write your email. So as you can see, those tasks can have a little bit more leverage and they are also low skill. The next one in the quadrant is going to be the $1,000 per hour task. Those tasks are high skill, but low leverage. An example from my own life can be my Notion consulting business. In this business, I'm trading my time for money. And this is a high skill project because of all the time that took me to master Notion, but it's still tied to my time. So it has zero leverage. And next in the quadrant is going to be the $10,000 per hour tasks. Those are high skill and high leverage. This in my case could be building a scalable online product, which is going to help most of my clients get the same service that I'm doing in my $1,000 per hour consultation business. Therefore, to productize my service. Normally, these tasks have much higher returns in the future, but very little return probably in the short term. But as you can see, they are super important for real growth. All the tasks to match this $10,000 per hour criteria will be to hire a new employee and train him in your company. I love this framework from K, so I decided to input it in my task management system as well. This is also very helpful when I'm in my focus page because I can sort all my tasks depending on the dollar value that they have. So first I want to see the 10k dollar task because probably it's going to be the first task that I'm going to tackle in the given day. And then if we go down, we will see the 1k, 100 and $10 per hour tasks. And as an extra bonus for this property, if I see that a $10 per hour task gets delayed because I never get to do it, probably I can even delete it because it's not going to move the needle so much for my business. So now in the last position, we have the related outcome. As I said before, the property that helps me the most in organizing my task is not the project property, it's the related outcome property. If you have watched this video over here, you already know that in my task management system, I use goals and outcomes in order to drive my tasks. Goals are those things that I want to achieve, but that are not quantifiable, such as I want to have a thriving business. And then the outcomes are linked to those goals and those are the actual quantifiables. So to have a thriving business, I will need to earn 100K in the year or I need to bring 300 new leads every month. So those are quantifiable and I can easily tell whether I have succeeded in them or not. So in my system, I link every task to an outcome. And why do I do this? Well, when I'm creating the task, I force myself to create that link. And if I find that whenever I'm creating the task, I don't find any outcome that I can link the task to, this means that this task is not helping me move forward to my real objectives. And therefore, I am not going to end up adding it to my system. This helps me a ton, you cannot believe how much, to filter out the noise that enters into my task management system. Now, I can assure you that if you use these six properties in your task management system, probably it's gonna be all you need. And by the way, this is part of the full system that I teach in the Notion Academy, my Notion program, in which I teach step-by-step step how to build the entirety of this system and where I also actively give feedback to the students and so on. So if you are interested in joining, I'm going to link the program in the description of this video. 
Now please let me know in the comments which for you will be your top one property that you will have in your task management system because I would love to know. So I hope you got value out of this video and as always, hasta la próxima.